a logo, hashtag Google I.O., a video montage plays. Since day one, we set out to significantly improve the lives of as many people as possible. And with a little help, you found new answers, discovered new places. The right words came at just the right time. And we even learned how to spell the word Epicurean. R-I-A-N. Life got a little easier. Our photos got a little better. And we got closer to a world where we all belong. Google Translate and Google Real Tone. A drummer with a prosthetic arm plays. All stations ready to resume count. Three, two, one. We have liftoff. So as we stand on the cusp of a new era, new breakthroughs in AI will reimagine the ways we can help. And x-rays, then a trip itinerary. We will have the chance to improve the lives of billions of people. A generate music button, people dance. We will give businesses the opportunity to thrive and grow. Colleagues use Google Meet. And help society answer the toughest questions we have to face. Now, we don't take this for granted. So while our ambition is bold, our approach will always be responsible. Because our goal is to make AI helpful for everyone. Caption, making AI helpful for people, businesses, communities, everyone. A fast-paced montage captures the daily lives of people from diverse backgrounds. Title, Google. In an outdoor amphitheater, the bold blue I.O. logo appears on a flat white tarpaulin. The stage features a large Google screen. Vertical stripes of blue, red, yellow, and green run down behind the screen and bisect the stage floor. A Google pen reads, Mountain View. It transforms into a small red live stream dot. Google CEO Sundar Pichai, he, him, takes the stage. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Google I.O. He stands stage right of the screen that provides visual aids to his keynote speech. It's great to see so many of you here at Showlane, so many developers, and a huge thanks to the millions joining from around the world from Bangladesh to Brazil to our new Bayview campus right next door. It's so great to have you as always. As you may have heard, AI is having a very busy year. So we've got lots to talk about. Let's get started. Seven years into our journey as an AI-first company, we are at an exciting inflection point. We have an opportunity to make AI even more helpful for people, for businesses, for communities, for everyone. We have been applying AI to make our products radically more helpful for a while. With generative AI, we are taking the next step. With a bold and responsible approach, we are reimagining all our core products, including search. You will hear more later in the keynote. Let me start with a few examples of how generative AI is helping to evolve our products, starting with Gmail. In 2017, we launched Smart Reply. Short responses you could select with just one click. Next came Smart Compose, which offered writing suggestions as you type. Smart Compose led to more advanced writing features powered by AI. They've been used in workspace over 180 billion times in the past year alone. And now with a much more powerful generative model, we are taking the next step in Gmail with Help Me Write. Let's say you got this email that your flight was canceled. The airline has sent a voucher, but what you really want is a full refund. You could reply and use Help Me Write. Just type in the prompt of what you want, an email to ask for a full refund, hit Create, and a full draft appears. As you can see, it conveniently pulled in flight details from the previous email. And it looks pretty close to what you want to send. Maybe you want to refine it further. In this case, a more elaborate email might increase the chances of getting the refund. <laughs> On the screen, the elaborate function transforms the email into a more detailed argument. And there you go. I think it's ready to send. Help Me Write will start rolling out as part of our workspace updates. And just like with Smart Compose, you will see it get better over time. The next example is Maps. Since the early days of Street View, 
AI has stitched together billions of panoramic images so people can explore the world from their device. At last year's I.O., we introduced Immersive View, which uses AI to create a high-fidelity representation of a place so you can experience it before you visit. Now we are expanding that same technology to do what Maps does best, help you get where you want to go. Google Maps provides 20 billion kilometers of directions every day. That's a lot of trips. Imagine if you could see your whole trip in advance. With Immersive View for routes, now you can, whether you're walking, cycling, or driving. Let me show you what I mean. Say I'm in New York City, and I want to go on a bike ride. Maps has given me a couple of options close to where I am. I like the one on the waterfront, so let's go with that. It looks scenic, and I want to get a feel for it first. Click on Immersive View for Routes, and it's an entirely new way to look at my journey. I can zoom in to get an incredible bird's eye view of the ride, and, and as we turn, we get onto a great bike path. The immersive view provides an aerial rendering of the route marked with a blue line. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful ride. You can also check today's air quality. Looks like AQI is 43, pretty good. And if I want to check traffic and weather and see how they might change over the next few hours, I can do that. Looks like it's going to pour later, so maybe I want to get going now. Immersive view for routes will begin to roll out over the summer and launch in 15 cities by the end of the year, including London, New York, Tokyo, and San Francisco. The stage is backdropped with a contemporary curving wall of light wood. Another product made better by AI is Google Photos. We introduced it at I.O. in 2015. It was one of our first AI-native products. Breakthroughs in machine learning made it possible to search your photos for things like people, sunsets, or waterfalls. Of course, we want you to do more than just search photos. We also want to help you make them better. In fact, every month, 1.7 billion images are edited in Google Photos. AI advancements give us more powerful ways to do this. For example, Magic Eraser, launched first on Pixel, uses AI-powered computational photography to remove unwanted distractions. And, and later this year, using a combination of semantic understanding and generative AI, you can do much more with a new experience called Magic Editor. Let's have a look. Say you're on a hike and you stop to take a photo in front of a waterfall. You wish you had taken your bag off for the photo, so let's go ahead and remove that bag strap. The photo feels a bit dark, so you can improve the lighting. And maybe you want to even get rid of some clouds to make it feel as sunny as you remember it. A tourist poses before a waterfall. Looking even closer, you wish you had posed so it looks like you're really catching the water in your hand. No problem, you can adjust that. The tourist's body is adjusted so their flat palm is directly under the waterfall. In another photo, a young child on a bench holds balloons. There you go. Let's look at one more photo. This is a great photo, but as a parent, you always want your kid at the center of it all. And it looks like the balloons got cut off in this one. So you can go ahead and reposition the birthday boy. Magic Editor automatically recreates parts of the bench and balloons that were not captured in the original shot. As a finishing touch, you can punch up the sky, it changes the lighting in the rest of the photo so the edit feels consistent. It's truly magical. We are excited to roll out Magic Editor in Google Photos later this year. The screen displays a collage of Find Photos, Magic Eraser, and Magic Editor under the Google Photos heading. From Gmail and Photos to Maps, these are just a few examples of how AI can help you in moments that matter. And there is so much more we can do to deliver the full potential of AI across the products you know and love. Today, we have 15 products that each serve more than half a billion people and businesses. And six of those products 
serve over 2 billion users each. This gives us so many opportunities to deliver on our mission, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. It's a timeless mission that feels more relevant with each passing year. And looking ahead, making AI helpful for everyone is the most profound way we will advance our mission. And we are doing this in four important ways. First, by improving your knowledge and learning and deepening your understanding of the world. Second, by boosting creativity and productivity so you can express yourself and get things done. Third, by enabling developers and businesses to build their own transformative products and services. And finally, by building and deploying AI responsibly so that everyone can benefit equally. We are so excited by the opportunities ahead. Our ability to make AI helpful for everyone relies on continuously advancing our foundation models. So I want to take a moment to share how we are approaching them. Last year, you heard us talk about Palm, which led to many improvements across our products. Today, we are ready to announce our latest Palm model in production, Palm 2. The Palm logo features uppercase P, L, and M. Palm 2 builds on our found fundamental research and our latest infrastructure. It's highly capable, at a wide range of tasks, and easy to deploy. We are announcing over 25 products and features powered by Palm 2 today. Palm 2 models deliver excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of sizes. We have affectionately named them Gecko, Order, Bison, and Unicorn. Gecko is so lightweight that it can work on mobile devices, fast enough for great interactive applications on device, even when offline. Palm 2 models are stronger in logic and reasoning thanks to broad training on scientific and mathematical topics. It's also trained on multilingual text spanning over 100 languages, so it understands and generates nuanced results. Combined with powerful coding cap capabilities, Palm 2 can also help developers collaborating around the world. Let's look at this example. Let's say you're working with a colleague in Seoul and you're debugging code. You can ask it to fix a bug and help out your teammate by adding comments in Korean to the code. It first recognizes the code is recursive, suggests a fix, and even explains the reasoning behind the fix. And as you can see, it added comments in Korean just like you asked. What? While Palm 2 is highly capable, it really shines when fine-tuned on domain-specific knowledge. We recently released SecPalm, a version of Palm 2 fine-tuned for security use cases. It uses AI to better detect malicious scripts and can help security experts understand and resolve threats. Another example is MedPalm 2. In this case, it's fine-tuned on medical knowledge. This fine-tuning achieved a 9x reduction in inaccurate reasoning when compared to the model, approaching the performance of clinician experts who answered the same set of questions. In fact, MedPalm 2 was the first language model to perform at expert level on medical licensing exam-style questions and is currently the state of the art. We are also working to add capabilities to MedPalm 2 so that it can synthesize information from medical imaging, like plane films and mammograms. You can imagine an AI collaborator that helps radiologists interpret images and communicate the results. These are some examples of Palm 2 being used in specialized domains. We can't wait to see it used in more. That's why I'm pleased to announce that it is now available in preview, and I'll let Thomas share more. Palm 2 is the latest step in our decade-long journey to bring AI in responsible ways to billions of people. It builds on progress made by two world-class teams, the Brain Team and DeepMind. Looking back at the defining AI breakthroughs over the last decade, 
These teams have contributed to a significant number of them. AlphaGo, Transformers, sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, and so on. All this helps set the stage for the inflection point we are at today. We recently brought these two teams together into a single unit, Google DeepMind. Using the computational resources of Google, they have focused on building more capable systems safely and responsibly. This includes our next generation foundation model, Gemini, which is still in training. Gemini was created from the ground up to be multimodal, highly efficient at tool and API integrations, and built to enable future innovations like memory and planning. While still early, we are already seeing impressive multimodal capabilities not seen in prior models. Once fine-tuned and rigorously tested for safety, Gemini will be available at various sizes and capabilities, just like Palm 2. As we invest in more advanced models, we are also deeply investing in AI responsibility. This includes having the tools to identify synthetically generated content whenever you encounter it. Two important approaches are watermarking and metadata. Watermarking embeds information directly into content in ways that are maintained even through modest image editing. Moving forward, we are building our models to include watermarking and other techniques from the start. If you look at a synthetic image, it's impressive how real it looks. So you can imagine how important this is going to be in the future. Metadata allows content creators to associate additional context with original files, giving you more information whenever you encounter an image. We'll ensure every one of our AI-generated images has that metadata. James will talk about our responsible approach to AI later. As models get better and more capable, one of the most exciting opportunities is making them available for people to engage with directly. That's the opportunity we have at BARD, our experiment for conversational AI. We are rapidly evolving BARD. It now supports a wide range of programming capabilities, and it's gotten much smarter at reasoning and math prompts. And as of today, it is now fully running on Palm 2. To share more about what's coming, let me turn it over to Sissy. Sundar exits. As the screen flashes colorful graphics, Sissy Shao, she, her, strides onto the stage. Her name appears on the screen. Thanks, Sundar. Large language models have captured the world's imagination, changing how we think about the future of computing. We launched BARD as a limited access experiment on a lightweight large language model to get feedback and iterate. And since then, the team has been working hard to make rapid improvements and launch them quickly. With Palm 2, BARD's math, logic, and reasoning skills made a huge leap forward, underpinning its ability to help developers with programming. BARD can now collaborate on tasks like code generation, debugging, and explaining code snippets. BARD has already learned more than 20 programming languages, including C++, Go, JavaScript, Python, Kotlin, and even Google Sheets functions. And we're thrilled to see that coding has quickly become one of the most popular things that people are doing with BARD. So let's take a look at an example. I've recently been learning chess, and for fun, I thought I'd see if I can program a move in Python. How would I use Python to generate the scholar's mate move in chess? The question appears in a Google search box. OK, here Bard created a script to recreate this chess move in Python. And notice how it also formatted the code nicely, making it easy to read. We've also heard great feedback from developers about how Bard provides code citations. And starting next week, you'll notice something right here. We're making code citations even more precise. If Bard brings in a block of code, just click this annotation, and Bard will underline the block and link to the source. Now, Bard can also help me understand the code. 
Could you tell me what chess.board does in this code? A detailed answer appears. Now, this is a super helpful explanation of what it's doing and makes things more clear. All right, let's see if we can make this code a little better. How would I improve this code? A detailed solution offers coding examples. Okay, let's see. There's a list comprehension, creating a function, and using a generator. Those are some great suggestions. Now, could you join them into one single Python code block? Okay, now Bard is rebuilding the code with these improvements. Okay, great. How easy was that? And in a couple clicks, I can move this directly into Colab. Developers love the ability to bring code from Bard into their workflow, like to Colab. So coming soon, we're adding the ability to export and run code with our partner Replit, starting with Python. <laughs> We've also heard that you want dark theme, so starting today, you can activate it. <laughs> the screen switches to a black background with light text. You can activate it right in Bard or let it follow your OS settings. And speaking of exporting things, people often ask Bard for a head start drafting emails and documents. So today, we are launching two more export actions, making it easy to move Bard's responses right into Gmail and Docs. So we're excited by how quickly BARD and the underlying models are improving, but we're not stopping there. We want to bring more capabilities to BARD to fuel your curiosity and imagination. And so I'm excited to announce that tools are coming to BARD. <laughs> the screen reads BARD plus tools. As you collaborate with BARD, you'll be able to tap into services from Google and extensions with partners to let you do things never before possible. And of course, we'll approach this responsibly in a secure and private way, letting you always stay in control. We're starting with some of the Google apps that people love and use every day. It's incredible what Bard can already do with text, but images are such a fundamental part of how we learn and express. So in the next few weeks, Bard will become more visual, both in its responses and your prompts. So if you ask, what are some must-see sites in New Orleans? Bard's going to use Google search and the knowledge graph to find the most relevant images. Okay, here we go. The French Quarter, the Garden District. These images are really giving me a much better sense of what I'm exploring. We'll also make it easy for you to prompt Bard with images, giving you even more ways to explore and create. People love Google Lens, and in the coming months, we're bringing in the powers of Lens to Bard. So. <laughs> in a photo, two dogs sit side by side. So if you're looking to have some fun with your fur babies, you might upload an image and ask Bard to write a funny caption about these two. Now, Lens detects that this is a photo of a goofy German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever, and then Bard uses that to create some funny captions. A caption when you're trying to figure out which one of you is the good boy. If you ask me, I think they're both good boys. Okay, now let's do another one. Imagine I'm 18 and I need to apply to college. I won't date myself with how long it's been, but it's still an overwhelming process. So I'm thinking about colleges, but I'm not sure what I want to focus on. I'm into video games, and what kinds of programs might be interesting? A lengthy response appears. OK, this is a helpful head start. Hmm, animation looks pretty interesting. Now I could ask, help me find colleges with animation programs in Pennsylvania. College names appear in bold. OK, great. That's a good list of schools. Now to see where these are, I might now say, show these on a map. Here, Bard's gonna use Google Maps to visualize where the schools are. Red pins appear on a physical map of Pennsylvania. This is super helpful and it's exciting to see that there's plenty of options not too far from home. Now let's start organizing things a bit. 
Show these options as a table. A table appears. Nice. Structured and organized, but there's more I want to know. Add a column showing whether they're public or private schools. The column appears beside the existing college, location, and degree offered columns. Perfect. This is a great start to build on. And now let's move this to Google Sheets so my family can jump in later to help me with my search. The table is converted into a Sheets document. You can see how easy it will be to get a jump start in BARD and quickly have something useful to move over to apps like Docs or Sheets to build on with others. Okay, now that's a taste of what's possible when BARD meets some of Google's apps. But that's just the start. BARD will be able to tap into all kinds of services from across the web with extensions from incredible partners like Instacart, Indeed, Khan Academy, and many more. So here's a look at one coming in the next couple months. With Adobe Firefly, you'll be able to generate completely new images from your imagination right in Bard. Now, let's say I'm planning a birthday party for my seven-year-old who loves unicorns. I want a fun image to send out with the invitations. Make an image of a unicorn and a cake at a kid's party. Okay, now Bard is working with Firefly to bring what I imagined to life. Four renderings of unicorns with cakes appear. How amazing is that? This will unlock all kinds of ways that you can take your creativity further and faster. And we are so excited for this partnership. Bard continues to rapidly improve and learn new abilities and we want to let people around the world try it out and share their feedback. So today, we are removing the wait list and opening up BARD to over 180 countries and territories. Sissy's image appears on large screens to either side of the textured wood backdrop. With more coming soon. And in addition to becoming available in more places, BARD is also becoming available in more languages. Beyond English, starting today, you'll be able to talk to Bard in Japanese and Korean. Japanese and Korean characters appear on screen. Adding languages responsibly involves deep work to get things like quality and local nuances right. And we're pleased to share that we're on track to support 40 languages soon. The supported language names are spaced out across the screen. It's amazing to see the rate of progress so far. More advanced models, so many new capabilities, and the ability for even more people to collaborate with BARD. And when we're ready to move BARD to our Gemini model, I'm really excited about more advancements to come. So that's where we're going with BARD, connecting tools from Google and amazing services across the web to help you do and create anything you can imagine through a fluid collaboration with our most capable large language models. There's so much to share in the days ahead. And now, to hear more about how large language models are enabling next generation productivity features right in Workspace, I'll hand it over to Aparna. Sissy exits through an arched passageway, seating the stage to Aparna. The screen reads, introducing Aparna Papu, she, her. From the very beginning, Workspace was built to allow you to collaborate in real time with other people. Now, you can collaborate in real time with AI. AI can act as a coach, a thought partner, a source of inspiration, as well as a productivity booster across all of the apps of Workspace. Our first steps with AI as a collaborator were via the Help Me Write feature in Gmail and Docs, which launched to trusted testers in March. We've been truly blown away by the clever and creative ways these features are being used, from writing essays, sales pitches, project plans, client outreach, and so much more. Since then, we've been busy expanding these helpful features across more surfaces. Let me show you a few examples. 
One of our most popular use cases is the trusty job description. Every business, big or small, needs to hire people. A good job description can make all the difference. Here's how Docs has been helping. Say you run a fashion boutique and need to hire a textile designer. To get started, you enter just a few words as a prompt. Senior level job description for textile designer. Docs will take that prompt, send it to our Palm 2 based model, and let's see what I got back. Not bad. With just seven words, the model came back with a good starting point written out really nicely for me. Now you can take that and customize it for the kind of experience, education, and skill set that this role needs, saving you a ton of time and effort. Next. The Google Sheets icon appears. Let me show you how you can get more organized with Sheets. Imagine you run a dog walking business and need to keep track of things like your clients, logistics about the dogs, like what time they need to be walked, for how long, etc. Sheets can help you get organized. In a new sheet, simply type something like client and pet roster for a dog walking business with rates and hit create. Sheets sends this input to a fine tuned model that we've been training with all sorts of sheet specific use cases. Look at that. The model. Detailed data appears in a spreadsheet. The model figured out what you might need. The generated table has things like the dog's name, client info, notes, etc. This is a good start for you to tinker with. Sheets made it easy for you to get started so you can go back to doing what you love. Speaking of getting back to things you love, let's talk about Google Slides. People use slides for storytelling all the time, whether at work or in their personal lives. For example, you get your extended family to collect anecdotes, haikus, jokes for your parents' 50th wedding anniversary in a slide deck. Everyone does their bit, but maybe this deck could have more pizzazz. Let's pick one of the slides and use the poem on there as a prompt for image generation. Mom loves her pizza, cheesy and true, while dad's favorite treat is a warm pot of fondue. Let's hit create and see what it comes up with. Behind the scenes, that quote is sent as an input to our text to image models, and we know it's unlikely that the user will be happy with just one option. So we generate about six to eight images so that you have the ability to choose and refine. Whoa, I have some oddly delicious looking fondue pizza images. Now, this style's a little too cartoony for me, so I'm gonna ask it to try again. Let's change the style to photography and give it a whirl. Just as weird, but it works for me. Photo-inspired renderings of pizza and fondue. You can have endless fun with this, with no limits on cheesiness or creativity. Starting next month, trusted testers will be able to try this and six more generative AI features across workspace. And later this year, all of this will be generally available to business and consumer workspace users via a new service called Duet AI for Workspace. <laughs> Stepping back a bit, I showed you a few powerful examples of how Workspace can help you get more done with just a few words as prompts. Prompts are a powerful way of collaborating with AI. The right prompt can unlock far more from these models. However, it can be daunting for many of us to even know where to start. Well, what if we could solve that for you? What if AI could proactively offer you prompts. Even better, what if these prompts were actually contextual and changed based on what you're working on? I am super excited to show you a preview of just that. This is how we see the future of collaboration with AI coming to life. Let's switch to a live demo so I can show you what I mean. Tony's here to help me with that. Hey, Tony. Hey, Parna. So, 
On the opposite side of the screen, Tony is at a desk with two laptops. My niece Mira and I are working on a spooky story together for summer camp. We've already written a few paragraphs, but now we're stuck. Let's get some help. As you can see, we launch a side panel, something the team fondly calls Sidekick. Sidekick instantly reads and processes the document and offers some really neat suggestions, along with an open prompt dialogue. If we look closely, we can see some of the suggestions, like what happened to the golden seashell? What are common mystery plot twists? Let's try the seashell option and see what it comes back with. Now, what's happening behind the scenes is that we've provided the entire document as context to the model, along with the suggested prompt, and let's see what we got back. The golden seashell was eaten by a giant squid that lives in the cove. <laughs> this is a good start. Let's insert these as notes so that we can continue our little project. Now, one of the interesting observations we have is that it's actually easier to react to something or perhaps use that to say, hmm, I want to go in a different direction. And this is exactly what AI can help with. I see a new suggestion on there for generating images. Let's see what this does. The story has a village, a golden seashell, and other details. And instead of having to type all of that out, the model picks up these details from the document and generates images. These are some cool pictures, and I bet my niece will love these. Let's insert them into the dock for fun. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through some more examples, and this will help you see why this powerful new contextual collaboration is such a remarkable boost to productivity and creativity. Say you're writing to your neighbors about an upcoming potluck. Now, as you can see, Sidekick has summarized what this conversation is about. Last year, everyone brought hummus. Who doesn't love hummus? But this year, you want a little more variety. Let's see what people signed up to bring. Now, somewhere in this thread is a Google Sheet where you've collected that information. You can get some help by typing, write a note about the main dishes people are bringing, and let's see what we get back. Go. Awesome. It found the right sheet and cited the source in the found in section, giving you confidence that this is not made up. It looks good. You can insert it directly into your email. Let's end with an example of how this can help you at work. Say you're about to give an important presentation, and you've been so focused on the content that you forgot to prepare speaker notes. The presentation is in an hour. Uh-oh. No need to panic. Look at what one of the suggestions is. Create speaker notes for each slide. <laughs> Let's see what happens. The generated notes appear in a sidebar. What happened behind the scenes here is that the presentation and other relevant context was sent to the model to help create these notes. And once you've reviewed them, you can hit insert and edit the notes to convey what you intended. We've been, so you can now deliver the presentation without worrying about the notes. As you can see, we've been having a ton of fun playing with this. We can see the true potential of AI as a collaborator, and we'll be bringing this experience to Duet AI for Workspace. With that, I'll hand it back to Sundar. Aparna exits stage left. On the screen, a colorful animated bicycle appears as Sundar returns. Thanks, Aparna. It's exciting to see all the innovation coming to Google Workspace. As AI continues to improve rapidly, we are focused on giving helpful features to our users. And starting today, we are giving you a new way to preview some of the experiences across Workspace and other products. It's called Labs. I say new, but Google has a long history of bringing labs, and you know, we've made it available throughout our uh, history as well. You can check it out at google.com slash labs. Next up, 
we're going to talk about search. Search has been our founding product from our earliest days. And we've always approached it placing user trust above everything else. To give you a sense of how we are bringing generative AI in search, I'm going to invite Kathy onto the stage. Kathy? Sundar exits stage right. The outdoor pavilion is covered by a massive umbrella-like shade sail. Kathy Edwards, they, them, enters from the stage left passage and stands to the right of the screen. Thanks, Sundar. You know, I've been working in search for many years. And what inspires me so much is how it continues to be an unsolved problem. And that's why I'm just so excited by the potential of bringing generative AI into search. Let's give it a whirl. So let's start with a search for what's better for a family with kids under three and a dog, Bryce Canyon or Arches? Now, although this is the question that you have, you probably wouldn't ask it in this way today. You'd break it down into smaller ones, sift through the information, and then piece things together yourself. Now, search does the heavy lifting for you. What you see here looks pretty different, so let me first give you a quick tour. You'll notice a new integrated search results page, so you can get even more out of a single search. There's an AI-powered snapshot that quickly gives you the lay of the land on a topic. And so here you can see that while both parks are kid-friendly, only Bryce Canyon has more options for your furry friend. Then if you want to dig deeper, there are links included in the snapshot. You can also click to expand your view, and you'll see how the information is corroborated. So you can check out more details and really explore the richness of the topic. This new experience builds on Google's ranking and safety systems that we've been fine tuning for decades. And search will continue to be your jumping off point to what makes the web so special. It's diverse range of content from publishers to creators, businesses, and even people like you and me. So you can check out recommendations from experts like the National Park Service and learn from authentic, first-hand experiences like the Mom Trotter blog. Because even in a world where AI can provide insights, we know that people will always value the input of other people, and a thriving web is essential to that. These new generative AI these new generative, thank you. The screen reads, smarter and simpler. These new generative AI capabilities will make search smarter and searching simpler. And as you've seen, this is really especially helpful when you need to make sense of something complex with multiple angles to explore. You know, those times when even your question has questions. So, for example, let's say you're searching for a good bike for a five-mile commute with hills. This can be a big purchase, so you want to do your research. In the AI-powered snapshot, you'll see important considerations like motor and battery for taking on those hills and suspension for a comfortable ride. Right below that, you'll see products that fit the bill each with images, reviews, helpful descriptions, and current pricing. This is built on Google's Shopping Graph, the world's most comprehensive data set of constantly changing products, sellers, brands, reviews, and inventory out there with over 35 billion listings. In fact, there are 1.8 billion live updates to our Shopping Graph every hour. So you can shop with confidence in this new experience, knowing that you'll get fresh, relevant results. And for commercial queries like this, we also know that ads can be especially helpful 
to connect people with useful information and help businesses get discovered online. They're here, clearly labeled, and we're exploring different ways to integrate them as we roll out new experiences in search. And now that you've done some research, you might want to explore more. So right under the snapshot, you'll see the option to ask a follow-up question or select a suggested next step. Tapping any of these options will bring you into our brand new conversational mode. The screen offers organized, easy to follow information on suitable bicycles. In this case, maybe you wanna ask a follow-up about e-bikes. So you look for one in your favorite color, red. And without having to go back to square one, Google Search understands your full intent and in that you're looking specifically for e-bikes in red that would be good for a five-mile commute with hills. And even when you're in this conversational mode, it's an integrated experience. So you can simply scroll to see other search results. Now, maybe this e-bike seems to be a good fit for your commute. With just a click, you're able to see a variety of retailers that have it in stock, and some that offer free delivery or returns. You'll also see current prices, including deals, and can seamlessly go to a merchant's site, check out, and turn your attention to what really matters, getting ready to ride. These new generative AI capabilities also unlock a whole new category of experiences on search. It could help you create a clever name for your cycling club, craft the perfect social post to show off your new wheels, or even test your knowledge on bicycle hand signals. These are things you may never have thought to ask search for before. Shopping is just one example of where this can be helpful. Let's walk through another one in a live demo. What do you say? Yeah. Crossing the stage to the desk, Kathy picks up a phone. So special shout out to my three-year-old daughter who is obsessed with whales. I wanted to teach her about whale song. So let me go to the Google app and ask, why do whales like to sing? And so here, I see a snapshot that organizes the web results and gets me to key things I, I want to know so I can understand quickly that, oh, they, they sing for a lot of different reasons, like to communicate with other whales, but also to find food. And I can click see more to expand here as well. Now, if I was actually with my daughter and not on stage in front of thousands of people, I'd be checking out some of these web results right now. They look pretty good. Now, I'm thinking she'd get a kick out of seeing one up close, so let me ask. The phone screen is shown on a sidebar. Can I see whales in California? And so the LLMs right now are working behind the scenes to generate my snapshot, distilling insights and perspectives from across the web. It looks like in Northern California, I can see humpbacks around this time of year. That's cool. I'll have to plan to take her on a trip soon. And again, I can see some really great results from across the web. And if I want to re refer to the results of my previous question, I can just scroll right up. Now, she's got a birthday coming up, so I can follow up with plush ones for kids under $40. Again, the LLMs are organizing this information for me, and this process will get faster over time. These seem like some great options. I think she'll really like the second one. She's into orcas as well. Phew, live demos are always a little nerve wracking. I'm really glad that one went whale. <laughs> the large stage screen shows a simple Google search box. What you've seen today is just a first look at how we're experimenting with generative AI in search. And we're excited to keep improving with your feedback through our Search Labs program. 
This new search generative experience, also known as SGE, will be available in labs along with some other experiments, and they'll be rolling out in the coming weeks. If you're in the US, you can join the waitlist today by tapping the labs icon in the latest version of the Google app or Chrome desktop. This new experience really reflects the beginning of a new chapter. And you can think of this evolution as search supercharged. Search has been at the core of our timeless mission for 25 years. And as we build for the future, we're so excited for you to turn to Google for things you never dreamed you could. Here's an early look at what's to come for AI in search. On the screen, a caption, for over a decade, AI has been behind the evolution of search. Now it's moving front and center, generating. I'ma make them talk like whoa. AI generates a poem about Whiskers the cat. Caption, so you can do more with a single search. Searches appear in search boxes. A generated answer. When picking a dress for an outdoor wedding in Miami, prepare for typically hot and humid weather. Here are some dresses to consider with two-day delivery. Images of dresses appear. Caption, and if you have a follow-up question, you don't have to start over. An ask a follow-up button appears. Caption, what about shoes? Yes, yes. Yes. Caption, every result is assembled live, connecting you to the best of the web. Come say hello. A search, compare two lunch spots near me that are good for big groups. Restaurant profiles appear, a woman dines, caption, and a search will keep evolving to answer any question in any format. A search, make me a training plan to run a 10K by the end of the summer. A detailed weekly plan includes video tutorials. You got this, let's go. It might even answer humanity's biggest questions. Is a hot dog a sandwich? And the answer is... Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Caption, whatever you're looking for, look for the beaker icon to unlock new ways to search. A plethora of generated search results flash. Sundar returns to the stage. On the black screen, the magnifying glass search icon splits into five overlapping icons. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I think it's more like a taco because the bread goes around it. <laughs> Comes from the expert viewpoint of a vegetarian. <laughs> right. Thanks, Kathy. It's so exciting to see how we are evolving search and look forward to building it with you all. So far today, we have shared how AI can help unlock creativity, productivity, and knowledge. As you can see, AI is not only a powerful enabler, it's also a big platform shift. Every business and organization is thinking about how to drive transformation. That's why we are focused on making it easy and scalable for others to innovate with AI. That means providing the most advanced computing infrastructure, including state-of-the-art TPUs and GPUs, and expanding access to Google's latest foundation models that have been rigorously tested in our own products. We are also working to provide world-class tooling so customers can train, fine-tune, and run their own models with enterprise-grade safety, security, and privacy. To tell you more about how we are doing this with Google Cloud, please welcome Thomas. Sundar goes. The screen reads, introducing Thomas Curian, he, him. Thomas strides out from the stage left passage. All of the investments you've heard about today are also coming to businesses. So whether you're an individual developer or a full-scale enterprise, Google is using the power of AI to transform the way you work. There are already thousands of companies using our generative AI platform to create amazing content, to synthesize and organize information, to automate processes, and to build incredible customer experiences. And yes, each and every one of you can too. There are three ways Google Cloud can help you take advantage of the massive opportunity in front of you. First, you can build generative applications 
using our AI platform, Vertex AI. With Vertex, you can access foundation models for chat, text, and image. You just select the model you want to use, create prompts to tune the model, and you can even fine tune the model's weights on your own dedicated compute clusters. To help you retrieve fresh and factual information from your company's databases, your corporate internet, your website, and enterprise applications, we offer enterprise search. Our AI platform is so compelling for businesses because it guarantees the privacy of your data. With both Vertex and Enterprise Search, you have sole control of your data and the costs of using generative AI models. In other words, your data is your data and no one else's. You can also choose the best model for your specific needs across many sizes that have been optimized for cost, latency, and quality. Many leading companies are using our generative AI technologies to build super cool applications, and we've all been blown away by what they're doing. Let's hear from a few of them. A video shows international business leaders. The unique thing about Google Cloud is the expansive offering. The Google partnership has taught us to lean in, to, to iterate, to test and learn, and have the courage to fail fast where we need to. But also Google's a really AI-centric company, and so there's a lot for us to learn directly from the engineering team. Now, with generative AI, we can have a much smarter conversations with our customers. We have been really enjoying taking the latest and greatest technology and making that accessible to our entire community. Getting early access to Vertex APIs opens a lot of doors for us to be most efficient and productive in the way we create experiences for Uber customers. The act of making software is really suddenly open up to everyone. Now you can talk to the AI on the Replit app and tell it, make me a work app program. And with one click, we can deploy it to a Google Cloud VM and you have an app that you just talked into existence. We have an extraordinarily exciting feature in the pipeline. It's called Magic Video, and it enables you to take your videos and images and with just a couple of clicks, turn that into a cohesive story. It is powered by Google's Palm technology, and it truly empowers everyone to be able to create a video with absolute ease. Folks come to a Wendy's, and a lot of times they use some of our acronyms, the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. They'll come in and give me a JBC. You know, we need to understand what that really means, and voice AI can help make sure that order is accurate every single time. Generative AI can be incorporated in all the business processes Deutsche Bank is running. The partnership with Google has inspired us to leverage technology to truly transform the whole restaurant experience. There is no limitations. There's no other way to describe it. We're just living in the future. We're also doing this with partners like Character AI. We provide Character with the world's most performant and cost-efficient infrastructure for training and serving the models. By combining its own AI capabilities with those of Google Cloud, consumers can create their own deeply personalized characters and interact with them. We're also partnering with Salesforce to integrate Google Cloud's AI models and BigQuery with their data cloud and Einstein, their AI-infused CRM assistant. In fact, we're working with many other incredible partners, including consultancies, software as a service leaders, consumer internet companies, and many more, to build remarkable experiences with our AI technologies. In addition to Palm 2, we're excited to introduce three new models in Vertex, including Imagine, which powers image generation, editing, and customization from text inputs. Cody 
for code completion and generation, which you can train on your own code base to help you build applications faster. And Chirp, our universal speech model, which brings speech to text accuracy for over 300 languages. We're also introducing reinforcement learning from human feedback into Vertex AI. You can fine tune pre-trained models by incorporating human feedback to further improve the model's results. You can also fine tune a model on domain or industry specific data as we have with SecPalm and MedPalm so they become even more powerful. All of these features are now in preview and I encourage each and every one of you to try them. The second way we're helping you take advantage of this opportunity is by introducing Duet AI for Google Cloud. Earlier, Aparna told you about Duet AI for Google Workspace and how it is an always on AI collaborator to help people get things done. Well, the same thing is true with Duet AI for Google Cloud, which serves as an AI expert pair programmer. Duet uses generative AI to provide developers assistance. Whether, wherever you need it, within the IDE, the cloud console, or directly within chat. It can provide you contextual code completion, offer suggestions tuned to your code base, and generate entire functions in real time. It can even assist you with code reviews and code inspection. Hen will show you more in the developer keynote. The third way we're helping you seize this moment is by building all of these capabilities on our AI-optimized infrastructure. This infrastructure makes large-scale training workloads up to 80% faster and up to 50% cheaper compared to any alternatives out there. Look, when you nearly double performance, with his hands spread out, Thomas grins. When you nearly double performance for less than half the cost, amazing things happen. Today, we're excited to announce a new addition to this infrastructure family, the A3 virtual machines, based on NVIDIA's latest H100 GPUs. We provide the widest choice of compute options for leading AI companies like Anthropic and Midjourney to build their future on Google Cloud. And yes, there's so much more to come. Next, Josh is here to show you exactly how we're making it easy and scalable for every developer to in innovate with AI and Palm 2. Thomas waves, then exits stage right. The capacity crowd welcomes the next speaker. The screen reads, introducing Josh Woodward, he, him. Thanks, Thomas. Our work is enabling businesses, and it's also empowering developers. Palm 2, our most capable language model that Sundar talked about, powers the Palm API. Since March, we've been running a private preview with our Palm API and it's been amazing to see how quickly developers have used it in their applications. Like Chapter, who are generating stories so you can choose your own adventure, forever changing story time. Or Game On Technology, a company that makes chat apps for sports fans and retail brands to connect with their audiences. And there's also Wendy's. They're using the Palm API to help customers place that correct order for the junior bacon cheeseburger they talked about in their talk to menu feature. But I'm most excited about the response we've gotten from the developer tools community. Developers want choice when it comes to language models, and we're working with leading developer tools companies like Langchain, Chroma, and many more to support the Palm API. We've also integrated it into Google developer tools, 
like Firebase and Colab. You can hear a lot more about the Palm API in the developer keynote and sign up today. Now, to show you just how powerful the Palm API is, I want to share one concept that five engineers at Google put together over the last few weeks. The idea is called Project Tailwind, and we think of it as an AI-first notebook that helps you learn faster. Like a real notebook, your notes and your sources power Tailwind. How it works is you can simply pick the files from Google Drive, and it effectively creates a personalized and private AI model that has expertise in the information that you give it. We've been developing this idea with authors like Steven Johnson and testing it at universities like Arizona State and the University of Oklahoma, where I went to school. Do you want to see how it works? Let's do a live demo. The screen mirrors Josh's laptop. Now imagine that I'm a student taking a computer science history class. I'll open up Tailwind, and I can quickly see in Google Drive all my different notes and assignments and readings. I can insert them. And what will happen when Tailwind loads up, as you can see, my different notes and articles on the side, here they are in the middle, and it instantly creates a study guide on the right to give me bearings. You can see it's pulling out key concepts and questions grounded in the materials that I've given it. Now, I can come over here and quickly change it to go across all the different sources and type something like create glossary for Hopper. And what's gonna happen behind the scenes is it'll automatically compile a glossary associated with all the different notes and articles relating to Grace Hopper, the computer science history pioneer. Look at this, Flowmatic, COBOL, Compiler, all created based on my notes. Now let's try one more. I'm gonna try something else called Different Viewpoints on Dynabook. So the Dynabook, this was a concept from Alan Kay. Again, Tailwind, going out, finding all the different things. You can see how quick it comes back, there it is. And what's interesting here is it's helping me think through the concept. So it's giving me different viewpoints. It was a visionary product. It was a missed opportunity. But my favorite part is it shows its work. You can see the citations here. When I hover over, here's something from my class notes. Here's something from an article the teacher assigned. It's all right here, grounded in my sources. Now, Project Tailwind is still in its early days, but we've had so much fun making this prototype, and we realized it's not just for students. It's helpful for anyone synthesizing information from many different sources that you choose, like writers researching an article, or analysts going through earnings calls, or even lawyers preparing for a case. Imagine collaborating with an AI that's grounded in what you've read in all of your notes. We want to make it available to try it out if you want to see it. The screen reads, sign up for Project Tailwind, g.co slash labs. There's a lot more you can do with Palm 2. And we can't wait to see what you build using the Palm API. Generative AI is changing what it means to develop new products. At Google, we offer the best ML infrastructure with powerful models, including those in Vertex, and the APIs and tools to quickly generate your own applications. Building bold AI requires a responsible approach. So let me hand it over to James to share more. Thanks. Josh crosses paths with James Manika, he, him, as he exits. Hi, everyone. I'm James. In addition to research, I lead a new area at Google called technology and society. Growing up in Zimbabwe, I could not have imagined all the amazing and groundbreaking innovations that have been presented on this stage today. And while I feel it's important to celebrate the incredible progress in AI and the immense potential that it has for people and society everywhere, 
We must also acknowledge that it's an emerging technology that is still being developed, and there's still so much more to do. Earlier, you heard Sunda say that our approach to AI must be both bold and responsible. While there's a natural tension between the two, we believe it's, it's, it's not only possible, but in fact critical to embrace that tension productively. The only way to be truly bold in the long term is to be responsible from the start. Our field-defining research is helping scientists make bold advances in many scientific fields, including medical breakthroughs. Take, for example, Google DeepMind's AlphaFold, which can accurately predict the 3D shapes of 200 million proteins. That's nearly all the catalog proteins known to science. AlphaFold gave us the equivalent of nearly 400 million years of progress in just weeks. So far, more than one million researchers around the world have used AlphaFold's predictions, including Feng Shang's pioneering lab at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. Yeah. Uh, in fact, in March this year, Zhang's, Zhang and his colleagues at, at, at MIT announced that they'd used AlphaFold to develop a novel molecular syringe which could deliver drugs to help improve the effectiveness of treatments for diseases like cancer. And while it's exhilarating to see such bold and beneficial breakthroughs, AI also has the potential to worsen existing societal challenges like unfair bias, as well as pose new challenges as it becomes more advanced and new uses emerge. That's why we believe it's imperative to take a responsible approach to AI. This work centers around our AI principles that we first established in 2018. These principles guide product development and they help us assess every AI application. They prompt questions like, will it be socially beneficial? Or could it lead to harm in any way? One area that is top of mind for us is misinformation. Generative AI makes it easier than ever to create new content, but it also raises additional questions about its trustworthiness. That's why we're developing and providing people with tools to evaluate online information. For example, have you come across a photo on a website or one shared by a friend with very little context like this one at the moon landing, and found yourself wondering, is this reliable? I have, and I'm sure many of you have as well. In the coming months, we're adding two new ways for people to evaluate images. First, with our About This Image tool in Google search, you'll be able to see important information, such as when and where similar images may have first appeared where else the image has been seen online, including news, fact-checking, and social sites, all this providing you with helpful context to determine if it's reliable. Later this year, you'll also be able to use it if you search for an image or screenshot using Google Lens, or when you're on websites in Chrome. As we begin to roll out the generative image capabilities, like Sunda mentioned, we will ensure that every one of our AI-generated images has metadata, a markup in the original file to give you context if you come across it outside of our platforms. Not only that, creators and publishers will be able to add similar metadata so you'll be able to see a label in images in Google search marking them as AI-generated. An example of a label appears on the screen. As we apply our AI principles, we also start to see potential tensions when it comes to being bold and responsible. Here's an example. Universal Translate is an experimental AI video dubbing service that helps experts 
translate a speaker's voice while also matching their lip movements. Let me show you how it works with an online college course created in partnership with Arizona State University. Videos play. What many college students don't realize is that knowing when to ask for help and then following through on using helpful resources is actually a hallmark of becoming a productive adult. Muchos universitarios no comprenden que saber cuándo pedir ayuda y usar recursos útiles es en realidad una clave para convertirse en un adulto productivo. We use Caption, original English audio, universal translator dubbed video with translation and lip matching. We use next generation translation models to translate what the speaker is saying, models to replicate the style and the tone, and then match the speaker's lip movements, then we bring it all together. This is an enormous step forward for learning comprehension, and we're seeing promising results of course completion rates. But there's an inherent tension here. You can see how this can be incredibly beneficial, but some of the same underlying technology could be misused by bad actors to create deep fakes. So we've built this service with guardrails to help prevent misuse, and we make it accessible only to authorized partners. And as Sundar mentioned, soon we'll be integrating new innovations in watermarking into our latest generative models to also help with the challenge of misinformation. Our AI principles also help guide us on what not to do. For instance, years ago, we were the first major company to decide not to make a general purpose facial recognition API commercially available. We felt there weren't adequate safeguards in place. Another way we live up to our AI principles is with innovations to tackle challenges as they emerge, like reducing the risk of problematic outputs that may be generated by our models. We are, we are one of the first in the industry to develop and launch automated adversarial testing using large language model technology. We do this for queries like this to help uncover and reduce inaccurate outputs, like the one on the left, and make them better, like the one on the right. We're doing this at a scale that's never been done before at Google, significantly improving the speed, quality, and coverage of testing, allowing safety experts to focus on the most difficult cases. And we're sharing these innovations with others. For example, our perspective API originally created to help publishers mitigate toxicity, is now being used in large language models. Academic researchers have used our perspective API to create an industry valuation standard. And today, all significant large language models, including those from OpenAI and Anthropic, incorporate this standard to evaluate toxicity generated by their own models. Building AI... Building, sorry. Building AI responsibly must be a collective effort involving researchers, social scientists, industry experts, governments, and everyday people. As well as creators and publishers, everyone benefits from a vibrant content ecosystem today and in the future. That's why we're getting feedback and we'll be working with the web community on ways to give publishers choice and control over their web content. It's such an exciting time. There's so much we can accomplish and so much we must get right together. We look forward to working with all of you. And now I'll hand it off to Samir, who will speak to you about all the exciting developments we're bringing to Android. Thank you. James cedes the stage to Samir Samat, he, him. Hi, everyone. It's, it's great to be back at Google I.O. As you've heard today, our bold and responsible approach to AI can unlock people's creativity and potential. But how can all this helpfulness reach as many people as possible? 
at Google, our computing platforms and hardware products have been integral to that mission. From the beginning of Android, we believed that an open OS would enable a whole ecosystem and bring smartphones to everyone. And as we all add more devices to our lives, like tablets, TVs, cars, and more, this openness creates the freedom to choose the devices that work best for you. With more than three billion Android devices, we've now seen the benefits of using AI to improve experiences at scale. For example, this past year, Android used AI models to protect users from more than 100 billion suspected spam messages and calls. On the screen, a message over a phone number reads, suspected spam call. We can all agree, that's pretty useful. There are so many opportunities where AI can just make things better. Today, we'll talk about two big ways Android is bringing that benefit of computing to everyone. First, continuing to connect you to the most complete ecosystem of devices, where everything works better together. And second, using AI to make the things you love about Android even better, starting with customization and expression. Let's begin by talking about Android's ecosystem of devices, starting with two of the most important, tablets and watches. Over the last two years, we've redesigned the experience on large screens, including tablets and foldables. We introduced a new system for multitasking that makes it so much easier to take advantage of all that extra screen real estate and seamlessly move between apps. We've made huge investments to optimize more than 50 Google apps, including Gmail, Photos, and Me. And we're working closely with partners such as Minecraft, Spotify, and Disney Plus to build beautiful experiences that feel intuitive on larger screens. People are falling in love with Android tablets, and there are more great devices to pick from than ever. Stay tuned for our hardware announcements, where you just might see some of the awesome new features we're building for tablets in action. It's really exciting to see the... <laughs> the rounded green head of the Android logo appears. It's really exciting to see the momentum in smart watches as well. Wear OS is now the fastest growing watch platform, just two years after launching Wear OS 3 with Samsung. A top ask from fans has been for more native messaging apps on the watch. I'm excited to share that WhatsApp is bringing their first ever watch app to Wear this summer. I'm really enjoying using WhatsApp on my wrist. I can start a new conversation, reply to messages by voice, and even take calls. I can't wait for you to try it. Our partnership on Wear OS with Samsung has been amazing, and I'm excited about our new Android collaboration on Immersive XR. We'll share more later this year. Now, we all know that to get the best experience, all these devices need to work seamlessly together. It's got to be simple. That's why we built FastPair, which lets you easily connect more than 300 headphones, and why we have Nearby Share to easily move files between your phone, tablet, or Windows and Chrome OS computer, and Cast to make streaming video and audio to your devices ultra simple, with support from over 3,000 apps it's great to have all your devices connected, but if you're anything like me, it can be hard to keep track of all this stuff. Just ask my family. I misplace my earbuds at least three times a day, which is why we're launching a major update to our Find My Device experience to support a wide range of devices in your life, including headphones, tablets, and more. It's powered by a network of billions of Android devices around the world. So if you leave your earbuds at the gym, other nearby Android devices can help you locate them. And for other important things in your life, like your bicycle or suitcase, 
Tile, Chipolo, and others will have tracker tags that work with the Find My Device network as well. Samir clasps his hands together. Now, we took some time to really get this right because protecting your privacy and safety is vital. From the start, we designed the network in a privacy-preserving way where location information is encrypted. No one else can tell where your devices are located, not even Google. This is also why we're introducing unknown tracker alerts. Your phone will tell you if an unrecognized tracking tag is moving with you and help you locate it. On the screen alongside the caption, unknown tracker alerts, a phone shows a map. It's important these warnings work on your Android phone, but on other types of phones as well. That's why last week we published a new industry standard with Apple, outlining how unknown tracker alerts will work across all smartphones. Both the new Find My Device experience and unknown tracker alerts are coming later this summer. Now, now we've talked a lot about connecting devices, but Android's also about connecting people. After all, phones were created for us to communicate with our friends and family. When you're texting in a group chat, you shouldn't have to worry about whether everyone is using the same type of phone. Sending high, <laughs> Sending high quality images and video, getting typing notifications, and end-to-end -end encryption should all just work. That's why we've worked with our partners on upgrading old SMS and MMS technology to a modern standard called RCS that, that makes all of this possible. And there are now over 800 million people with RCS. on our way to over a billion by the end of the year. We hope every mobile operating system <laughs> gets the message and adopts RCS. So we can all hang out in the group chat together, no matter what device we're using. Whether it's connecting with your loved ones or connecting all of your devices, Android's complete ecosystem makes it easy. Another thing people love about Android is the ability to customize their devices and express themselves. Here's Dave to tell you how we're taking this to the next level with generative AI. Samir exits. Entering the stage, Dave Burke, he, him, stands stage right at the screen. All right, thanks, Samir, and hello, everyone. So here's the thing. People want to express themselves in the products they use every day, from the clothes they wear, to the car they drive, to their surroundings at home. We believe the same should be true for your technology. Your phone should feel like it was made just for you. And that's why customization has always been at the core of the Android experience. This year, we're combining Android's guided customization with Google's advances in generative AI, so your phone can feel even more personal. So let me show you what this looks like. To start, messages and conversations can be so much more expressive, fun, and playful with Magic Compose. It's a new feature coming to Google Messages powered by generative AI that helps you add that extra spark of personality to your conversation. So just type your message like you normally would, and then choose how you want to sound. Magic Compose will do the rest, so your messages give off more positivity, more rhymes, more professionalism. A message, Prithi, or, shall we dine tonight? Or if you want, in the style of a certain playwright. To try or not to try this, quest, this feature, that is the question. Now, we also have new personalizations coming to the OS layer. At Google I.O. two years ago, we introduced Material U. It's a design system that combines user inspiration with dynamic color science for a fully personalized experience. 
We're continuing to expand on this in Android 14 with all new customization options coming to your lock screen. So now I can add my own personalized style to the lock screen clock so it looks just the way I want. And what's more, with the new customizable lock screen shortcuts, I can instantly jump into my most frequent activities. Of course, what really makes your lock screen and home screen yours is the wallpaper. And it's the first thing that many of us set when we get a new phone. Now, emojis are such a fun and simple way of expressing yourself, so we thought, wouldn't it be cool to bring them to your wallpaper? So with emoji wallpapers, you choose your favorite combination of emoji, pick the perfect pattern, and then find just the right color to bring them all together. So let's take a look. And I'm not going to use the laptops. I'm going to use a phone. All right. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to go into the wallpaper picker. And I'm going to tap on the new option for emojis. And I'm feeling in a kind of, I don't know, zany mood with all you people looking at me. So I'm going to pick uh, this guy and this guy. And uh, let's see, who else is in here? This one looks pretty cool, like the 8-bit one. And then obviously that one. Uh, <laughs> And uh, somebody said there was a duck on stage earlier, so let's go find a duck. Uh, hello, duck. Where's the duck? Can anyone see a duck? Where's the duck gone? There's a duck. All right, there he is. We got some ducks. Okay, cool. And then uh, pattern-wise, uh, we got a bunch of different patterns you can pick. Um, I'm going to pick mosaic. That's my favorite. Then I'm going to play with the zoom. Let's see His phone I'm screen appears right. in a sidebar. Okay, I got enough ducks in there. Okay, cool. And then colors. Uh, let's see. Uh, ooh, that pops. Uh, <laughs> Let's go with a more muted one, uh, or maybe that one. That one looks good. That looks good. I like that one. All right, select that, set the wallpaper, and then I go home. Looks pretty cool, huh? His orange wallpaper features Android logos, ducks, and emojis. And uh, the, little, the little emojis, they react when you tap them, which I find... <laughs> I, fi I find this unusually satisfying, and... Uh, <laughs> How much time have I got? Okay, no, okay, let me move on. Uh, okay, so <laughs> of course, many of us like to use a favorite photo for our wallpaper. And so with the new cinematic wallpaper feature, you can create a stunning 3D image from any regular photo and then use it as your wallpaper. So let's take a look. So this time I'm gonna go into my photos. And I really like this photo of my daughter. So let me select that. And you'll notice there's a sparkle icon at the top. So if I tap that, I get a new option for cinematic wallpaper. So let me uh, activate that and then wait for it. Boom. OK. Now, under the hood, we're using an on-device convolutional neural network to estimate depth, and then a generative adversarial network for in-painting as the background moves. The result is a beautiful cinematic 3D photo. So then let me set the, photo, set the wallpaper. And then I'm going to return home. And check out the parallax effect as I tilt the device. It literally jumps off the screen. The background behind his daughter shifts as Dave tilts the phone. So both cinematic wallpapers and emoji wallpapers are coming first to Pixel devices next month. So let's say you don't have the perfect wallpaper photo handy, or you just want to have fun and create something new. With our new generative AI wallpapers, you choose what inspires you, and then we create a beautiful wallpaper to fit your vision. So let's take a look. So this time, I'm going to go and select Create a Wallpaper with AI. And I like classic arts. So let me tap that. Now, you'll notice at the bottom, we use structured prompts to make it easier to create. So for example, I can pick, uh, what am I going to do? City by the Bay in a uh, post-impressionist style. Cool. And I type, tap create wallpaper. Nice. Now, behind the scenes, we're using Google's text to image diffusion models to generate completely new and original wallpapers. And I can swipe through and see all the different options that it's created. And some of these look really cool, right? AI generated portraits in a post impressionist style. Uh, so let me, let me pick this one. I like this one. So I'll select that, set the wallpaper, and then return home. Cool. So now, out of the billions of Android phones in the world, no other phone will be quite like mine. And thanks to Material U, you can see that the system's color palette is automatically adapted to match the wallpaper I created. Generative AI wallpapers will be coming this fall. <laughs> so
So from a thriving ecosystem of devices to AI-powered expression, there is so much going on right now in Android. OK, Rick is up next to show you how this Android innovation is coming to life in the Pixel family of devices. Thank you. Dave leaves the stage crossing paths with Rick Osterloh, he, him. The pace of AI innovation over the past year has been astounding. As you heard Sundar talk about earlier, new advances are transforming everything from creativity and productivity to knowledge and learning. Now let's talk about what that innovation means for Pixel, which has been leading the way in AI-driven hardware experiences for years. Now from the beginning, Pixel was conceived as an AI-first mobile computer, bringing together all the amazing breakthroughs across the company and putting them into a Google device you can hold in your hand. Other phones have AI features, but Pixel is the only phone with AI at the center. And I mean that literally. The Google Tensor G2 chip is custom designed to put Google's leading edge AI research to work in our Pixel devices. By combining Tensor's on-device intelligence with Google's AI in the cloud, Pixel delivers truly personal AI. Your device adapts to your own needs and preferences, and it anticipates how it can help you save time and get more done. This personal AI enables all those helpful experiences that Pixel's known for that aren't available on any other mobile device, like Pixel Call Assist, which helps you avoid long hold times, navigate phone tree menus, ignore the calls you don't want, and get better sound quality on the calls you do want. <laughs> Personal AI also enables helpful Pixel speech experiences. On-device machine learning translates different languages for you, transcribes conversations in real time, and understands how you talk and type. And you're protected with Pixel Safe, a collection of features that keep you safe online and in the real world. And of course, there's Pixel Camera. A collage of photos appears on the screen. It understands faces, expressions, and skin tones to, to better depict you and the people you care about. So your photos will always look amazing. We're also constantly working to make Pixel Camera more inclusive and more accessible with features like Real Tone and Guided Frame. Pixel experiences continue to be completely unique in mobile computing. And that's because Pixel's the only phone engineered end to end by Google, and the only phone that combines Google Tensor, Android, and AI. With this combination of hardware and software, Pixel lets you experience all those incredible new AI-powered features you saw today in one place. For example, the new Magic Editor in Google Photos that Sundar showed you, it'll be available for early access to select Pixel phones later this year, opening up a whole new avenue of creativity with your photos. And Dave just showed you how Android's adding depth to how you can express yourself with generative AI wallpapers. And across search, Workspace and Bard, new features powered by large language models can spark your imagination, make big tasks more manageable, and help you find better answers to everyday questions all from your Pixel device. We have so many more exciting developments in the space, and we can't wait to show you more in the coming months. Now, it's probably no surprise that as AI keeps getting more and more helpful, our Pixel portfolio keeps growing in popularity. Last year's Pixel devices are our most popular generation yet, with both users and respected reviewers and analysts. The screen shows a Pixel watch alongside the review, Pixel Watch is a gorgeous piece of hardware. Our Pixel phones won multiple Phone of the Year awards. 
<laughs> yes, thank you. And in the premium smartphone category, Google is the fastest growing OEM in our markets. <laughs> One of our more popular products is the Pixel A series, which delivers incredible, thank you. I'm glad you like it. It delivers incredible Pixel performance in a very affordable device. And to continue the I.O. tradition, let me show you the newest member of our A-Series. Today, we're completely upgrading everything you love about our A-Series with the gorgeous new Pixel 7a. A video shows the Google Pixel 7a's sleek rounded contours and dual camera lens. Like all Pixel 7 series devices, Pixel 7a is powered by our flagship Google Tensor G2 chip, and it's paired with eight gigabytes of RAM, which ensures Pixel 7a delivers best-in-class performance and intelligence. And you're gonna love the camera. The 7a takes the crown from 6a as the highest-rated camera in its class, with the biggest upgrade ever to our A-series camera hardware, including a 72% bigger main camera sensor. Now here's the best part. Pixel 7a is available today, starting at $499. It's, it's an unbeatable combination of design, performance, and photography, all at a great value. And you can check out the entire Pixel 7a lineup on the Google Store, including our exclusive coral color. Now, next up, we're gonna show you how we're continuing to expand the Pixel portfolio into new form factors. Yeah. <laughs> like foldables and tablets. You can see them right there. It's a complete ecos ecosystem of AI-powered devices engineered by Google. Here's Rose to show you what a larger screen Pixel can do for you. Rick welcomes Rose with a friendly grin, then exits the stage. The screen reads, introducing Rose Yao, she, her. Okay, let's talk tablets, which have been a little bit frustrating. It's always hard to know where they fit in, and they haven't really changed in the past 10 years. A lot of times they're sitting forgotten in the drawer, and that one moment you need it, it is out of battery. We believe tablets and large screens in general still have a lot of potential. So we set out to build something different, making big investments across Google Apps, Android, and Pixel to reimagine how large screens can deliver a more helpful experience. Pixel tablet is the only tablet engineered by Google and designed specifically to be helpful in your hand and in the place they are used the most the home. We designed the Pixel tablet to uniquely deliver helpful Pixel experiences, and that starts with great hardware. A beautiful 11-inch high-resolution display with crisp audio from the four built-in speakers. A premium aluminum enclosure with a nano ceramic coating that feels great in the hand and is cool to the touch. The world's best Android experience on a tablet powered by Google Tensor G2 for long-lasting battery life and cutting-edge personal AI. For example, with Tensor G2, we optimize the Pixel camera specifically for video calling. Tablets are fantastic video calling devices. And with Pixel tablet, you are always in frame, in focus, and looking your best. The large screen makes Pixel Tablet the best Pixel device for editing photos with AI-powered tools like Magic Eraser and Photo Unblur. Now, typing on a tablet can be so frustrating. With Pixel Speech and Tensor G2, we have the best voice recognition, making voice typing nearly three times faster than tapping. 
And as Samir mentioned, we've been making huge investments to create great app experiences for larger screens, including more than 50 of our own apps. With Pixel Tablet, you are getting great tablet hardware or great tablet apps. But we saw an opportunity to make the tablet even more helpful in the home. So we engineered a first of its kind charging speaker dock. Woo! A rotating view shows the tablet mounted on a sleek oblong base. It gives the tablet a home. And now you never have to worry about it being charged. Pixel Tablet is always ready to help 24 seven. When it's docked, the new hub mode turns Pixel Tablet into a beautiful digital photo frame, a powerful smart home controller, a voice activated helper, and a shared entertainment device. It feels like a smart display, but has one huge advantage. With the ultra fast fingerprint sensor, I can quickly unlock the device and get immediate access to all my favorite Android apps. So I can quickly find the recipe with SideChef, or discover a new podcast on Spotify, or find something to watch with the tablet optimized Google TV app. Your media is going to look and sound great with room filling sound from the charging speaker dock. Pixel Tablet is also the ultimate way to control your smart home. And that starts with a new redesigned Google Home map. It looks great on Pixel Tablet, and it brings together over 80,000 supportive smart home devices, including all of your Mather-enabled devices. We also, <laughs> we also made it really easy to access your smart home controls directly from hub mode. With the new home panel, any family member can quickly adjust the lights, lock the doors, or see if a package was delivered. Or if you're lazy like me, you can just use your voice. Now, we know that tablets are often shared. So a tablet for the home needs to support multiple users. Pixel Tablet makes switching between users super easy. So you get your own apps and your own content while maintaining your privacy. <laughs> and my favorite part, it is so easy to move content between devices. Pixel Tablet is the first tablet with Chromecast built in. So with a few taps, <laughs> I can easily cast some music or my favorite show from my phone to the tablet. And then I can just take the tablet off the dock and keep listening or watching all around the house. We designed a new type of case for Pixel Tablet that solves the pain of flimsy tablet cases. It has a built-in stand that provides continuous flexibility and is sturdy at all angles. So you can confidently use your tablet anywhere, on a plane, in bed, or in the kitchen. The case easily docks, you never have to take it off to charge. And it's just another example of how we can make the tablet experience even more helpful. <laughs> the new Pixel tablet comes in three colors. It is available for pre-order today and ships next month starting at just $4.99. And the best part, every Pixel tablet comes bundled with the 129 charging speaker dock for free. <laughs> It is truly the best tablet in your hand and in your home. To give you an idea of just how helpful Pixel Tablet can be, we asked TV personality Michelle Buteau to put it to the test. Let's see how that went. Michelle Buteau, stand-up comedian, actress, and podcast host. When Google asked me to spend the day with this tablet, I was a little apprehensive because um, I'm not a tech person. I don't know how things work all the time but I'm a woman in STEM now. Yeah. Some days I could barely find the floor, let alone a charger for something. So when the Google folks said something about a tablet that docks, <laughs> I was like, okay then, Google prove it. At home, Michelle's family dances. <laughs> I'm on average two to five meetings a day. 
today. I got stuck on all these features, honey, the 360 of it all. The last time I was around this much sand, some of it got caught in my belly button and I had a pearl two weeks later. Look, there's a bird. So this is what I loved about my me time today. Six shows just popped up based off of my preferences. And they were like, hey girl. <laughs> I would have made it funnier, but that was good. My husband is actually a photographer, so I have to rely on him to make everything nice and pretty. But now, I love this picture of me and my son, but there's a boom mic there. Look, it's right here. Did you see this one? Get this mic, you see that? Magic eraser, like a circle or brush. Michelle erases the boom know? mic from the photo. Boom! How cute is that? And so I hope not only you guys are happy with me reviewing this, but that you'll also give me one, because, <laughs> I mean. Michelle's young child runs circles around her. You're getting tired, right? Yeah. You're not? OK. Because I am. <laughs> Rick Osterloh has returned to the stage. That's a pretty good first review. Now, tablets aren't the only large screen device we want to show you today. It's been really exciting to see foldables take off over the past few years. Android's driven so much innovation in this new form factor, and we see tremendous potential here. We've heard from our users that the Dream Foldable should have a versatile form factor, making it great to use both folded and unfolded. It should also have a flagship level camera system that truly takes advantage of the unique design. And an app experience that's fluid and seamless across both screens. Creating a foldable like that, it, it really means pushing the envelope with state-of-the-art technology. And that means an ultra-premium 1799 device. Now to get there, we've been working closely with our Android, Android colleagues to create a new standard for foldable technology. Introducing Google Pixel Fold. A video shows light reflecting off the rounded contours of the Google Pixel Fold. The casing features the Square G2 logo. It combines Tensor G2, Android innovation, and AI for an incredible phone that unfolds into an incredible compact tablet. It's the only foldable engineered by Google to adapt to how you want to use it with a familiar front display that works great when it's folded. And when it's unfolded, it's our thinnest phone yet and the thinnest foldable on the market. The tablet folds closed like a book. A video showcases its revolutionary design. <laughs> now to get there, we had to pack a flagship level phone into nearly half the thickness which meant completely redesigning components like the telephoto lens and the battery and a lot more. So it can fold up and it can fit in your pocket and retain that familiar smartphone silhouette when it's in your hand. But Pixel Fold has three times the screen space of a normal phone. You unfold it and you're treated to an expansive 7.6 inch display that opens flat with a custom 180 degree fluid friction hinge. So you're getting the best of both worlds. It's a powerful smartphone when it's convenient and an immersive tablet when you need one. And like every phone we make, Pixel Fold is built to last. We've extensively tested the hinge to be the most durable of any foldable. Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protects it from exterior scratches, while the IPX8 water resistant design safeguards against the weather. And as you'd expect from a Pixel device, Pixel Fold gives you entirely new ways to take stunning photos and videos with Pixel Camera. You put the camera in tabletop mode to capture the stars. And you can get closer with the best zoom on a foldable. And use the best camera on the phone for your selfies. The unique combination of form factor triple rear camera hardware and personal AI with Tensor G2 make it the best foldable camera system. Woo! 
Now, there, there are so many experiences that feel even more natural with the Pixel Fold. One is the dual screen interpreter mode. Your Pixel Fold, your Pixel Fold can use both displays. Both displays. In a lounge, a client uses dual screen interpreter mode. To provide a live translation to you and the person you're talking to. So it's really easy to connect across languages. <laughs> and powering all of this is Google Tensor G2. Pixel Fold has all the personal AI features you'd expect from a top of the line Pixel device, including safety, speech, and call assist. Plus, it's got great performance for on the go multitasking and entertainment. And the entire foldable experience is built on Android. So let's get Dave back out here to show you the latest improvements to Android you'll get to experience on a Pixel Fold. Rick nods and exits stage right. Dave Burke emerges from the other entrance and stands at the desk. All right, thanks Rick. From new form factors and customizability to biometrics and computational photography, Android has always been at the forefront of mobile industry breakthroughs. And recently, we've been working on a ton of features and improvements for large screen devices like tablets and foldables. So who thinks we should try a bunch of live demos on the new Pixel Fold? The Pixel Fold shows bird's wings on the screen. All right, let's do it. It starts the second I unfold the device with this stunning wallpaper animation. And the hinge sensor is actually driving the animation. And it's a subtle thing, but it makes the device feel so dynamic and alive. The wings move. Yeah, I just love that. All right, so let's go back to the folded state. And I'm looking at Google Photos of a recent snowboarding trip. Now, the scenery is really beautiful. So I want to show you on the big screen. I just open my phone, and the video ex instantly expands into this gorgeous full screen view. The fold screen appears on the large central screen. We call this feature continuity, and we've obsessed over every millisecond it takes for apps to seamlessly adapt from the small screen to the larger screen. Now, all work and no play makes Davey a dull boy. So I'm going to message my buddy about getting back out on the mountain. I can just swipe to bring up the new Android taskbar, then drag Google Messages to the side to enter split screen mode like so. And to, to inspire my buddy, I'm going to send them a photo so I can just drag and drop from Google Photos right into my message, like so. And thanks to the new Jetpack drag and drop library, this is now supported in a wide variety of apps, from Workspace to WhatsApp. You'll notice we've made a bunch of improvements throughout the OS to take advantage of the larger screen. So for example, here's the new split keyboard for faster typing. And if I pull down from the top, you'll notice the new two-panel shade showing both my notifications and my quick settings at the same time. Now, Pixel Fold is great for productivity on the go. And if I swipe up into Overview, you'll notice that we now keep the multitasking windows paired. And for example, I was working on a Google Docs and Slides earlier to prep for this keynote. And uh, I, think I've <laughs> I think I've followed most of these tips so far, but I'm not quite done yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been warned, by the way. Uh, anyway, uh, I can even adjust the split to suit the content uh, that I'm viewing. And you know, working this way, it's like having a dual monitor uh, set up in the palm of my hand, allowing me to do two things at once. Which reminds me, I should probably send a Rick a quick note. So I'll open Gmail. And uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to use the new Help Me Write feature. So let's try this out. Uh, don't cheer yet. Let's see if it works. OK, Rick. <laughs> Rick, congrats on, uh, what are we going to call this? Pixel Fold uh, launch, uh, amazing with Android. OK. And then I probably should say Dave, uh, not Andrew, Android. Uh, Dave, it's hard to type with all you people looking at me. All right. Now, by the power of large language models, allow me to elaborate. <laughs> Dear Rick. Congratulations on the successful launch of Pixel Fold. I'm really impressed with the device and how well it integrates Android. The foldable screen is a game changer, and I can't wait to see what you do with it now. <laughs> All right, that's productivity, but there's more. 
Uh, the Pixel Fold is also an awesome entertainment device, and YouTube is just a really great showcase for this. So let's start watching this video on the big screen. Now, look what happens when I fold the device at right angles. YouTube enters what we call tabletop mode, so that the video plays on the top half, and then we're working on adding playback controls to the bottom half for an awesome single-handed lean-back experience. And the video just keeps playing fluidly through these transitions without losing a beat. OK, one last thing. Uh, we're adding support for switching displays from within an app. And Pixel Fold's camera is a really great example of that. Now, uh, by the way, say hi to Julie behind me. She's the real star of this show. The phone screen captures Julie, the videographer. So Pixel Fold has this new button on the bottom right. So I'm going to tap this. And it means I can move the viewfinder to the outside screen. So let me turn the device around. OK, so why is this interesting? Well, it means that the viewfinder is now beside the rear camera system. And that means I can get a high quality, ultra wide, amazing selfie with the best camera on the device. Speaking of which, and you knew where this was going, smile, everybody. You look awesome. <laughs> Audience members wave. I always wanted to do that at Google I.O. keynote. All right. <laughs> All right, so what you're seeing here is the culmination of several years of work, in fact, on large screens spanning the Android OS and the most popular apps on the Play Store. All this work comes alive on the amazing new Pixel tablet and Pixel Fold. Check out this video. Thank you. They ain't never seen it like this. A fast-paced montage showcases the features of the Google Pixel tablet and Pixel Fold. Movie clips appear on the tablet. Now two Google users converse with Google Meet. Caption, that movie has never been watched like this. Work has never worked like this. The Pixel Fold unfolds. Caption, things have never unfolded like this. Had game like this. A scene from Minecraft appears. Caption, made plays like this. A football player makes a running catch. People use Google Meet to visit online. Caption, like this, you've never seen it like this, until now. Rows of tablets and folds show photos and Google apps. Compatible app logos appear followed by Google icons. Rick returns to the stage. That demo was awesome. Across Pixel and Android, we're making huge strides with large screen devices. And we can't wait to get Pixel Tablet and Pixel Fold into your hands. And you're not going to have to wait too long. You can pre-order Pixel Fold starting today, and it'll ship next month. The screen reads Pixel Fold starts at $17.99. And you'll get the most out of our first ultra premium foldable by pairing it with Pixel Watch. So when you pre-order a Pixel Fold, you'll also get a Pixel Watch on us. Caption, two terabytes of Google One for six months, YouTube Premium for three months. The Pixel family continues to grow into the most dynamic mobile hardware portfolio in the market today. From a broad selection of smartphones to watches, earbuds, and now tablets and foldables, there are more ways than ever to experience the helpfulness Pixel's known for, wherever and whenever you need it. Now let me pass it back to Sundar. Thanks, everyone. Rick gives way to Sundar. On the blue screen, an animated balloon with red, green, blue, and yellow stripes floats alongside the Google I.O. logo. Thanks, Rick. I'm really enjoying the new tablet and the first Pixel foldable phone. And I'm proud of the progress Android is driving across the ecosystem. As we wrap up, I've been reflecting on the big technology shifts that we've all been a part of. The shift with AI is as big as they come, and that's why it's so important that we make AI helpful for everyone. We are approaching it boldly with a sense of excitement, because as we look ahead, Google's deep understanding of information, combined with the capabilities of generative AI, can transform search and all of our products yet again. And we are doing this responsibly in a way that underscores the deep commitment we feel to get it right. No one company can do this alone. Our developer community will be key to unlocking the enormous opportunities ahead. We look forward to working together and building together. 
So on behalf of all of us at Google, thank you and enjoy the rest of I.O. Sundar waves and makes his way off the stage. On a white background, a list of disclaimers appears. Caption, hashtag Google I.O. A massive I.O. thank you to all the people who worked together across time zones, slide decks, docs, meet calls, and more to make this year's keynote possible. We made it. See you next year. Thanks for joining us for I.O. 2023. We hope you enjoyed the show. On a white background, the blue Google I.O. logo appears in the top left corner.